Today I continue my story in San Francisco, Chapter Two: The Face at the Window. Dim walked slowly up Telegraph Hill. It's worth a foggy afternoon in February. Every day, Jim walked in front of an old mansion. It was a mysterious wooden building with a big garden and a fence around it. Jim often looked at it and thought, "What's inside? Why doesn't anyone live here?" That afternoon, he stopped in front of the gate. He looked at the garden and the tree. What a strange place! No one took care of it. Then he looked up at the old mansion. He looked at the window on the second floor. There was a face behind it. He felt cold. It was the face of a little girl with long dark hair, but no one lived in that mansion. Who was it? A ghost? Jim didn't believe in ghosts, but who was the girl at the window? She looked at him. He continued to look at it, the window. Suddenly, the face of the girl disappeared. Jim could not see well. Because it was very foggy, he de- decided to go home quickly. He walked in the door and into the living room. He saw his grandfather in the corner of the room. Grandpa, he cried, "I saw a ghost." What did you say? Asked his grandfather with a smile. What did you say? I saw the face of the little girl at the window of the the old mansion. No one lives there, but I saw a girl. She looked at me. Are you sure, Jim? It's a very foggy afternoon. Did you see her clearly? No one lives in the old Stewart mansion. It's about one hundred years old. There was a strange story about it, but I don't think. There are any ghosts. What story? Please tell me," said Jim. Well, Mr. Stewart was a very rich, but very strange man. He was very interested in science and experience. He had a lot of enemies. People told his experiment was mysterious and sinister. His wife and daughter died in a mysterious accident. It was terrible. He left San Francisco and returned to New York. I saw a face, Grandpa. I did," said Jim. "But Jim, you don't believe in ghost," said his grandfather. "You're right, but I saw that girl face." Says Jim, maybe it was your im- imagination," said his grandfather kindly. Jim went to his room and turned on the radio. He listened to some songs and then started doing his homework. The next day, Jim went to work at the supermarket. It was a busy day. A strange man with long hair and a silver earring came in. His clothes were old. Customer was always usually friendly, but this man was not. He had an angry expression. He had an angry expression, passed quickly, and left. There was something strange about him. When Jim went home that evening, he phoned Brian. "Hi, how was your day?" "Very busy," says Brian. "Yes, mine too. Do you want to see that new science fiction movie on at the big screen movie theater? We can meet at seven o'clock p.m. in front of the park," said Jim. "Okay, I'll see you then." Said Brian, at Washington Square. Don't be late.
Then Jim left the house and started walking to the park. He stopped in front of the gate of the old Stewart Mansion again. There was no one at the window. He stayed there a few minutes. It was windy, and the big tree in the garden made strange noisy noise. He looked at his watch. It was nearly seven o'clock. He was late to meet Brian. Chapter two, Chapter Three, The Stewart Mansion. After the movie, the two boys went to eat an ice cream at Pier Thirty Nine. It was a beautiful night. They stopped and looked at the Alcatraz Island in the middle of San Francisco Bay. Jim told Brian about the face at the window. What said Brian? I don't believe it. I want to come with you next week. I want to see her too. Really? That's great," said Jim. "It's a strange place. I'm always a little afraid when I go alone. Let's go together soon. On Monday after school, the two friends met Susan at the bus stop. They got on the bus. Where are you going? Susan asked. Can you keep a secret? Asked Jim. Why? Do you have a secret? Asked Susan. Yes, I do. Said Jim. Is Robert Jenny's new boyfriend? Asked Susan. Jenny was a very popular girl in their class. Susan hoped Jenny's new boyfriend wasn't him. He told her about the Stewart Mansion and about the face at the window. Then he told his friend his grandfather's story about the mansion, the scientist, and the mysterious accident. Scary," said Susan. "Our、oh, mansion always have a ghost. Can I come with you?" Jim smiled at her and said. Of course, but promised not to tell anyone. Jim was happy that Susan wanted to come. Susan was pretty. Hey, come on! It's our stop," said Brian. "Let's get off." It was half past four p.m. and it was a cold, sunny afternoon. The three friends walked up Telegraph Hill. When they arrived at the Stewart Mansion, they stopped in front of the old gate. What a strange place," said Susan. "It cool," said Brian. They looked at the window on the second floor, but they saw nothing. They started talking and looking around. "Hey, do you smell anything strange?" said Susan. They stopped and smelled the air. There was a very bad smell in the air. What is that smell? asked Brian. I don't know. It smells like rotten egg, said Jim. Yes, that's true. But where did it come from? asked Brian. Susan and Brian look at the gym. Then they look at the window on the second floor again. Are you sure a sour face, Jim? Asked Susan. Jim didn't know what to say. There was no one at the window now. This is a scary place, but I don't see any ghost," said Brian. This smell is terrible," said Susan. Let's go home and forget about the ghost. It will probably your imagination, Jim. Look! cried Jim. There's yellow smoke over there. Near the bottom window of the mountain, they saw strange yellow smoke in the air. The air. Wow! You're right," said Susan. What happens here? What happened in here? said Brian. It smells like a dead body. Maybe there's a dead body in the mountain. Maybe this is a secret cemetery," 
said Jim. Brian's, Brian's face became white. The three friends looked at, looked at each other. A secret cemetery, they said softly. They were cured, but terrified at the same time. No one knew what to say. Oh, please get, let's go home. This place frightened me, said Susan. There's not something strange happening here, said Brian. They agreed to leave and went to Jim's house to listen to his new CDs. They sat in Jim's room and talked about the mansion. Then Susan suddenly said, Hey, they had a big Chinese New Year parade this Saturday night. I'm talking to Moriano children. It's always lots of fun, said Jim. I'm going to go. Me too, said Brian. Hi, I'm going to introduce about something else. A guy to San Francisco. San Francisco is an international center for business, education, science, and the arts. Thousands of tourists visit the city every year because there are many interesting places to see. San Francisco is a very cosmopolitan city. Cosmopolitan city. People from all over the world live there. There are lots of money. Multicultural neighborhoods. Chinatown is very big, very big, colorful Chinese neighborhood on Grand Avenue. The streets here are narrow. There are Chinese food shops, souvenir shops, and restaurants. There are also Chinese library and Chinese school. Many children from Chinese families go to Chinese school after regular school. They want to learn to speak, read, and write their parents' language. The street shy and shop shy in Chinatown are in Chinese too. The picture is ancient into Chinatown. A view of Alcatraz Island from above. <clears throat> Alcatraz Island is a small island in San Francisco Bay. It is a big tourist attraction because it was a famous prison for many years. There was one guard for every three to five prisoners. Some prisoners tried to escape, but they fell. It was impossible to escape from Akachar by swimming across to San Francisco because of the cold water. Akachar was home to many dangerous criminals like the gangster on Capone. The prison was closed in 1963. Because the condition were very bad, condition were very bad. Now it is a museum. You can see photographs of some of the prisoners there, and write, read about them. There are many exciting movies about Alcatraz Island and its prisoners. Peter. Thirty nine is another famous attraction on the bike. There are many different shops, games, well, galleries, ice cream stand, and entertainment on the pier. Many of shops sell funny t shirts. Fisherman World is on the bike too. There are hundreds of fishing boats and outdoor food stands with good seafood. There are also many street artists and souvenir shops. At Fisherman Wharf, you can take an exciting boat ride on the bay.
Remember to wear warm clothes because it's sometimes very windy on the bike. The cop car is a common form of transportation in San Francisco. It's climb up and down the city hills. It is great fun to ride the cop car. Golden Gate Park is a big park in the middle of the city. There are many excellent museums, a famous aquarium, and a flower conservatory. You can also ride your bike or go jogging in the beautiful park. A great symbol of San Francisco is Golden Gate Breeze. It's a, it is a spectacular breeze with its red-orange color. It was very difficult to view it in 1937 because of the strong winds and rural sea. It connects San Francisco to Northern California. Another bridge connects the city to Eastern California. This is called the Bay Bridge. Union Square is in the city center. It's an international shopping area with many famous designer shops and big department stores. There are many tall buildings in the center of San Francisco. They are called skyscraper. One skyscraper looks like a giant triangle. The weather in the San Francisco is often foggy and windy. It doesn't rain a lot. A lot of people go to live in San Francisco because it has so many attractions. The people of San Francisco are very popular in America because they are usually very friendly and outgoing. This picture is a view of San Francisco's skyline. Wow, it's breeze. Thanks for listening.